just to share some of my reflections, um, it's the same scene being enacted again. Is this starting to get old, this story? You know, like every <laughs> month or so, there's a new country that just happens to be having these civil, civil disturbances, and the IMF just happens to be offering them a big loan, which will completely take over that country, and their resources will then belong to the World Bank or to the US or UK or whatever. Um, and, you know, you know the scenario because we've seen, I could, <clears throat> I wouldn't have enough fingers to lay out just in the last few years all the countries that this has happened to. But um, as I'm trying to make sense of it now, uh, the U.S. is pretending that it's not invading and blaming Russia for doing that. But meanwhile, um, if you listen to Kerry and Obama, it's very belligerent, macho talk about, well, you know, if you do this, you're going to regret it, and, and we, you know, we're not taking anything off the table, all that kind of stuff. So why are we even dealing with a country or an area that, for, I don't like thinking in terms of countries a whole lot, so that area, those people, why are we even dealing with that? Well, it turns out that they, if you look at a map of Ukraine, a tremendous amount of their border is uh, borders Russia. And Russia is a real concern for NATO. And so they've already got missiles in Poland. That took them a decade, but they're there. And the Russians hate it. Now, they, if, if they can basically take over control, and they probably won't send troops in there. They're going to do this financially. World War III has been going on for quite a while. It's just financial. It's too obvious if you go in and start blowing stuff up in many cases. So they, they, do, they do it through, the, you know, for instance, with I Iraq, yes, we wanted their oil. But even more, we wanted their central bank. And we wanted them not to be selling oil for gold because that would undermine the petrodollar and, and start the U.S. on the, the collision course you know, toward the third world, being a third world country, which is accelerating very rapidly now. And so, um, so I think the U.S., the, the main interest is to go in and economically take over that country so that then they'll have the ability to, uh, to keep Russia from doing it. Uh, and also to threaten Russia more. Um, so, wh so why would Russia care about it? You know, Russia made a deal with, uh, the, with the Ukraine during the collapse of the Soviet Union that if the Ukraine would get rid of its nuclear weapons, then Russia would promise never to bring soldiers across the border without being invited. So it's a beautiful story. The Ukraine, got, they destroyed all of their nuclear weapons. Uh, and then they filled in all of the silos and ceremonially planted flowers on top of them. Now the Russian troops are moving in. It, it's becoming more and more obvious to the world, and the U.S. was just voted the most feared entity in the world, like 76%, the next closest one was 21, something like that. So people are catching on. And basically what it takes not to be invaded by the U.S. is nuclear weapons. So of course they don't want Iran to get them, uh, but it's the only thing that can protect you from predators like the U.S. right now is to have nuclear weapons, or at least the, the only thing in the kind of obvious first level. <coughs> so why, why is Russia so interested in, uh, in the Ukraine again? Well, the Ukraine has tremendous oil resources and gold and all sorts of other things, and three of the, the four major pipelines from Russia going to Eastern Europe run right through uh, the Ukraine. And so if, they were, if Russia were to lose control of those pipelines, or worse still, if you, the Ukraine was really free to develop their oil fields, then they would be, it would be more convenient for Europe to buy from them. Yes. And that's a huge percentage of the Russian uh, GDP, is selling their oil to, to Europe. So there's all of those kind of international intrigues going on with resources and money and all that stuff. And then... Uh, I don't know if any of you follow John Rappaport, but he just wrote a great blog today uh, on this whole thing of just stepping back, looking to see that, that this is problem, reaction, solution again, where you create some sort of problem. You know, the, the CIA uh, has, has been paying a lot of the demonstrators over there, and the, now they found out they got this, this leaked call that said these snipers who were assassinating protesters from both sides it turned out we're also being paid for basically by the cabal, and that's where I'm going with this now, that the problem, reaction, solution, usually the countries end up coming to some sort of agreement after millions of people have been killed or whatever, but it's always to the benefit of the banking cabal. 
they end up getting more countries, more uh, economies, more military, more tax, tax bases under their control. And so ultimately, I think that, uh, well, maybe not ultimately, but at, a, at the next higher level, uh, that's what this one is about. Now, I have strong hopes that because so many people are so aware now, the internet is, is getting information around so fast that, that um, I think the invasion of, her, of Iran has been uh, at least prevented to this point by us, by people like us all over the world who are spreading the information about potential false flags uh, with, with Iran, and then the whole Syrian thing. You know, when the, when the, when the U.S. population and, then, and the U.K. Parliament stood up and said, no, you don't get to run that one again, that was a huge thing. And so I'm hoping something like that is going to happen here, and in the process, more and more is going to get exposed about the technique of problem, reaction, solution, and about behind this is the whole Western banking cabal. Um. One of the things in looking at the Ukraine and what's going on that I'll say is that when I now um, see something like this happen, I know to look both at the resources, what resources do they have, and also what's their relationship to the dollar. Are they doing any, is anybody trading in a dollar that they're thinking about changing? So those are like the two clues right off the bat to look for that. Listen, you can tell from the mainstream news what they want you to think, which will give you a clue also, because usually it's like, look over here, because it's happening over there. But that's still a clue. Um, but I do those three things right off the bat, is to like listen to what they want me to think, look at the resources, and then look at the relationship to the dollar, because this petrodollar thing is huge, and getting the resources is, true, is um, really a big part of it also.